Hey everybody, I want to talk about a subject today and it's called doubts. We all have at times a case of the doubts where we doubt. And sometimes when we doubt we can get a little squirrely in our life and I want to address that in this short chapel time. Hi, uh, my name's Bo, if you don't know, out of Tucson, Arizona. And I'm going to read from 1 John chapter 1. And usually I read in order one all the way down to whatever verse I'm reading. But I'm going to start in verse 4 and then I'm going to go back up to 1. It says, we write this to make our joy complete. That which is from the beginning, God which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. This life appeared, and we have seen it and testify to it, and we proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father that has appeared to us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us, and our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. You know, sometimes when the doubts hit, we can just have to ask a question, why are we doubting? What is the reason that we're doubting? And a lot of times in our skeptical world, which the world at times has gone through seasons of very high skepticism, and we are in one of those moments where there's a lot of skepticism concerning the Christian faith. But what we can do is we can actually study more. Now, what I want you to see is that John, he is telling us that the things that he believes about Jesus being God from the very beginning of creation, right? He He's not saying that this is something that he just believes because it sounds good or because it makes him feel good or it's because he's going to have a great life. Remember, these guys, all the disciples predominantly were all killed because of their faith. They could have renounced Jesus at any time. They could have said at any time, hey, guess what? It's all a hoax. Hey, we're just joking. You know, Jesus never did rise from the dead. Jesus really isn't God in human flesh. Hey, guys, kick back, right? But he, they never did. They never renounced their faith. And the reason why is because John tells us here. He says that the things which they have heard, the things which they have seen, with their eyes and those things which they have touched. This, it says, John says, we proclaim to you guys. We're going to proclaim it because these are things we heard, these are things which we have seen, and these are things which we have touched. And so we have to remember that the biblical writers weren't just people that just were into some cool stories but they were writing about things that they heard and they seen and they literally touched. It impacted their life through and through that even going through a, a, a grisly death or a grisly time of suffering at the hands of enemies because of their faith, going through martyrdom, it didn't stop them from believing. It was worth it because of the things that they heard seen and touched and that should give you joy and help you with the doubts to remember that hey Christianity wasn't something that was just invented one day where people said hey I think I, I'm going to make up a great religion and they just kind of poof there it was no it was based on a historical person and that person is Jesus of Nazareth and it's based on the historical facts surrounding not only his birth in his life, but also his crucifixion and his resurrection. Those things are what impacted these people's lives so much that they would literally die for it. Now you might say, hey Bo, I'm just not I wasn't there, so I haven't heard or seen or touched. I don't know. I mean, 
yeah, I, I believe in Jesus. And yeah, there's some cool things that happen in my life and things like that. But I just don't know, you know, how do I really know, you know, that, well, that's why we can actually, that's why I say you can study. You can actually learn more. And that's the beautiful thing about Christianity is that in your downtime, when you're not doing anything, you can do research. You can study for yourself. You can actually look at dis different historians. What did they mention about this person from Nazareth? You can actually get different books that uh, are, are wonderfully written on the issues of is Christianity true? And you can study for yourself. And what that's going to do is those things, those studies will build you up. They'll help you see that we have a load of information that we can feel very confident in the Bible we're reading today is the same Bible that was back in the olden days, in the days that the apostles were around, and that um, and, and that Jesus did, in fact, rise from the dead. He really was a person of history. So, you know, there's so many things on YouTube, and there's so many clips here and clips there, and it takes much more uh, effort. But that effort, and that's what I'm getting at, is that effort is going to help you with the doubts. And it's just like when you put in the effort into anything that you're struggling with, right? When you put in the effort in the time and you put in the research, there's a payoff. And all of a sudden, what seemed to be shaky with some instability, now all of a sudden there's stability. And now there's a solidness to it. And that's because you've been working on things, right? And so that's the same way here. We can trust, you know, we can look at it and go, wow, that's amazing. John's not just writing things that he, he wants to believe are true, but he's writing about things that he heard, saw, and that he literally touched with his hands. And that's great for him. But we need to do investigation ourselves too. And that'll help you with those doubts. And that'll give you that stability that you need. So I hope that helps you and you guys have a great one.